There are so many ways to run a reselling business. It works for everyone that makes it work for them. Literally, reselling can be anything. It can be enough to have a little side hustle income. It can be your full-time gig and pay all of your bills. If you are retired, if you are disabled, if you want to stay home with your kids, if you just enjoy thrifting and uh, flipping vintage items. Whatever reselling is for you, that is what it is for you. There are many different ways that this business works, but today I'm gonna be showing you a few days in my life. You're gonna see a couple wardrobe changes uh, because I filmed this video over several days. I just wanna give you guys an honest representation of what my life is like as a reseller. It's time to pull a few orders and see what sold. First thing that sold, um, he's already got them packaged up here, so I will just pop a picture up over here. My oldest son, Dello, he's 17. He buys the automotive parts that I find at the Amazon bin store. So essentially, I go to the Amazon bins return store. I fill an entire Ikea bag for $10, and I'm always finding these. These are valve stem caps, and I probably find them like 30 or 40 at a time. So he gets all of that, and I, I sell them to him for ten dollars which essentially paid for my entire bag it makes anything that i found that day profit um and it still is a charge to him well he sold each one of these for ten dollars a piece now it was free shipping but i think basically he broke even off of these two sales which happened within the first week of him selling them he has these in such bulk that he can kind of undercut the competition a little bit and um it's nice spending money for a 17 year old essentially every automotive part he has from that haul is all profit now uh, one of these is nissan and the other is is Jeep. Oh, you guys, back there in that corner behind the crock pot, <laughs> there are some McDonald's glasses. Do you see them? Yeah, those sold. Here's the problem. The problem is not that they're at the top of the closet behind a few things. The problem is this guys this pile right here has kind of gotten out of control some of it's israel's toys he pulled from his bedroom that he wants to sell over on whatnot um, a few things that i pulled from an estate and i just keep piling it and now i have to get past the pile to get to those glasses and i sold the glasses uh way less than what i previously had them listed for what did i sell them for i want to say i previously had them listed at like 27 dollars i took a, a best offer offer. Um, we negotiated back and forth until I sold those for 10 bucks plus $12 shipping. Now I have to go get them though. I definitely should have been recording that. I probably did the stupidest thing I could do. I took off my flip flops. <laughs> I literally climbed on top of that pile. <laughs> I got the glasses though. Um, let's not make fun of me for picking up these glasses. I was excited when I found these. Um, I mean, to be honest, I still ended up selling them for $2.50 a piece, essentially, if I'm getting $10 for this set, plus $12 ship. $22 for these glasses isn't like a tragedy. I'm definitely making money still, but they've just sat in my inventory for the better part of a year. I'm so over stale inventory and I've been clearing seeing it out. I've been bringing it to whatnot. I've been changing up things in my listings, changing the keywords, like whatever I can do to get this stuff sold because I, I mean, I have stuff in my eBay store that's been listed for years. And I saw somebody the other day, was it Resell Dojo that said, your entire store cannot be long tail items. Like you can pepper in some long tail items. It's not sustainable if you plan on doing this full time as your primary source of income and, and I do. So I'm trying to get rid of some items that have just sat. The longer you resell, you definitely learn better about what to pick up, what not to pick up. So yeah, I got some stuff I have to get rid of. I organize my inventory um, by type. So any lingerie or vintage nightgowns that I have, even swimsuits, um, that is definitely gonna be in this bin. I sold a piece, that's not it, it's brown. Oh, there it is. I sold this set. Um, I'll pop up a picture of what this looks like. Uh, funny story about this though. The buyer sent me a message and she said, I've been watching this item for a while and um, I was, I've was i been saving up for it, but with the $7.50 shipping, I'm just gonna make you an offer because it's clear you're not putting this on sale. And another item I've had listed for a while, but it's vintage Victoria's Secret. I knew the right buyer would come along. I feel like I had it listed at like $53. She offered me 35. I took the offer, she never paid for it. If you're not aware, whenever a buyer does not pay for an item and you have 
have to relist it. There's a 30 cent loss to you. Um, it's not recoverable. It's a processing fee uh, for a sale that essentially didn't happen because the buyer never paid. Thank you, eBay. So when the same buyer came back like a week later and said, I don't know what happened. I couldn't log into my eBay. I'm just now logging back in. Will you take the same $35 offer again on my now relisted item? <laughs> the way I was tempted to say $35 and 30 cents, but I didn't. You know, sometimes you have to like silence the petty bone. I said, absolutely. $35 plus the $7.50 shipping and she didn't pay for it. <laughs> and we're going on like day three. So I sent a message and I said, I accepted your offer. Are you going to pay for the item? And she paid right away. So I try to give buyers the benefit of the doubt when possible. That is essentially, I honestly feel like it's something that buyers probably think is automatic on eBay because it should be. It's automatic everywhere but eBay. But on eBay, when a buyer accepts an offer, it doesn't automatically um, take out the payment. So if you're new to eBay and you have buyers who aren't paying for the items, instead of just waiting and canceling it, send them at least one message reminder. Hey, I accepted your offer. I'm ready to ship as soon as payment is posted. Thanks. You know, have a great day. Just be polite and nice and let them know you haven't paid for the item yet. I use these really sturdy metal shelves that we got from Sam's Club. I have an entire video on my inventory storage system. Um, these shelves, uh, exactly how I organize like by men's shirts, by jackets. Um, if you want to check out that video, I will post it in the link down below. I picked up this really cool single stitch Gulf Shores, Alabama made in the USA uh, cotton t-shirt for $2 at the thrift store. Just sold it for $20 plus $7.50 shipping. After taxes and everything, the buyer's all in at $29.34 on, on just a cool old vintage t-shirt. You won't get rich off of most of these, but they're always worth picking up. Let me show you guys something real quick. Let me, let me give you a little tip. This is what single stitch means. So here, I'll compare it with the t-shirt I have on real quick. Okay, you see how there are two rows of stitching on this t-shirt? This is how like most basic t-shirts are. This shirt only has one row of stitching. This is what's called single stitch. Most of the time when you see single stitch, it's going to mean that it's vintage, but a a lot of modern brands have started to bring back single stitch. It's actually more durable than a double stitch. I know it doesn't make sense, but unless you're like into tailoring, you wouldn't necessarily understand that. But you can also take the stitching and that that will be the case on the sleeve hem as well. And then take clues from the tag as well. You could usually date clothing by like it having a cloth tag. The fact that this is made in the USA. If all else fails, you can use an RN number on a tag to help date an item. Um, so just a couple of clues and tips there on dating some vintage clothing for you guys. I had a vintage toy sale and before I show you, should I keyword these dolls creepy? <laughs> haunted Halloween sometime in, during the spooky season. I, I picked these up guys because they're handmade and no one seems to want them. Like I've offered them as low as $5 a piece on whatnot sales. But here is the toy that sold this little uh, rubber tractor sold for $10.90 with free shipping. I had some whatnot sales also guys. I'm not going to go into what individually each one of these things sold for unless I just remember the price. I want to say this cast iron pine cone. Uh, Judy Thrifting KC style bought this for like six bucks. Um, these were, I think, $4 for both of those. I mean, on whatnot, I'm definitely not getting the prices I could get on eBay, but it's a quick flip and I'm bringing some really cool products over on whatnot. If you see anything here and you ever think, man, I want to go shop your whatnot, there's a $15 credit to shop whatnot. If you've never signed up for whatnot, you get $15 for free uh, following the link that is in the description. Divine Finds um, won these. Uh, I want to say it was $5 for the set of three of them. Um, this was one of the most expensive things that I sold and it was only $8. It's Francoma. Uh, the Thunderbird Canteen sold that thankful um, sign. I sold this tiny little embroidery hoop that says fall. Uh, my friend Lala's fancy one showed up and bought these really cool um, candlestick holders and then she bought this also. Uh, I mean, all in all, I guess I only had four buyers and I want to say that show I ended up selling like close to $50 worth of stuff and I was on there about an hour. Some of the advantages to selling on whatnot, I'm going to sell this stuff immediately. I'm going to sell it that night. It's a quick flip. If I can pick something up for $2 and sell it for four, rinse and repeat and keep doing the same thing. It's a volume game over on whatnot versus if I listed all this stuff on eBay, it may sit for a while, but I'll be able to sell it at a much better price. So um, I can understand whatnot not being the selling platform for absolutely everyone. If you think it's a selling platform for you, there's a link in the description for that too. Um, it is my referral as a seller and basically tells whatnot that I personally 
believe that you would be an asset to the whatnot community and it can help you get your application responded to a lot quicker because it took me four months to get approved on whatnot and when you use a referral link i've had people approved within 24 hours Working from home as a mom is seriously no joke. Like I feel like as soon as I drop the kids off, I get a couple hours of work done and it's time to go get in the line to pick them back up. Like I pick um, my youngest son up, my oldest drives. Um, I don't just leave him at school, <laughs> but I pick my youngest son up every day and it's already time to go get him. I feel like I just started working. The pickup line at school, I don't know if it's this way everywhere across the nation, I feel like it is. It's like a 30 to 40 minute process and most of that time you're just sitting still in your car. I feel like that is so much idle time that I could still be working but I have to be in the line to get a spot to pick him up. It's a whole thing and what am I going to do? Like bring my laptop and do a hot spot or something? <laughs> Enter Vindu, the sponsor of today's video and their app that allows me to be productive even on the go. I cross-listed items while I was in line at the thrift store the other day and regularly I will take the half hour that I'm in the line at my son's school pickup and I will cross list things from my eBay over to my Poshmark and did you know that you can take and import your entire Poshmark closet over into your whatnot I'm gonna be figuring out how to do that it'll be in an upcoming video but I'm telling you Vindu has changed the game for me I had spent the better part of last year not cross posting at all because I just don't have time to sit down in front of the computer with the computer on to cross post but guys it's literally literally an app. Let me show you. Look at this. Here is all of my eBay inventory right here in one place. And I'm going to do a little screen recording real quick and show you guys exactly how easy it is and how fast we can cross list an item from eBay over to Poshmark. I don't cross list everything um, from eBay to Poshmark, like these huge pictures. I'm definitely not cross posting those because they're going to weigh more than five pounds. But let's take an item that I feel like would probably do well. How about this vintage Tommy Hilfiger sweater? So I'm going to select this and then down here at the bottom of the screen select marketplaces you can see it's listed on eBay but it's not listed on Poshmark as soon as I select that I'm gonna scroll down and please select a category so um, you always have to enter the category uh, women's tops okay so it's under women's tops now I'm gonna select that and um, sweatshirts and hoodies and now size type US standard and I think this one was a medium I should have checked before I entered this. I'm pretty sure it was a medium. The original price. I always just put zero dollars. Do you guys do any different? No discount on this. Let's back back out of here. Make sure that this top was actually a medium. It is a medium. Yay. <laughs> and then guys, everything else is already inputted. Like I honestly just have to put the category, the size, and the original price. That is it. $39 list price is already there and I can click list. It's that easy. Do you know how many of those I can get done in the 30 minutes that I'm waiting in my son's line? So if I do my daily eBay listings, let's say I can get five to 10 items listed in the morning. By the time that it rolls around and it rolls around quickly, time for me to pick up my son, I can cross post all of those items while at wait. Or if you want to create your listings on Vindu, you can actually do that and post to everyone all at once. Guys, they have new AI technologies rolling out. It is the answer everyone's been looking for as far as resellers looking for a cross-listing platform that listens to you. Vindu has their own reseller conference coming up online in October. I, I want you guys to subscribe and be looking for more information on that here and on my Instagram because I'm going to be giving away two free tickets to that conference. Thank you again, Vindu, not only for sponsoring today's video, video but for making what was previously the least productive part of my day into one of my most productive parts and an aspect of my reselling that I had been neglecting that is cross-listing. If you want to sign up for Vindu there's a discount code in the description. Click that, check out all of their plans and see which one's right for you. Okay guys I'm about at my wits end with the space. This is my office. It just has to be so many different things. So I started listing some things earlier um, just to get them off of this table. This stuff is all for a whatnot that's going to take place. When am I doing that? Oh it's tonight. Well, not when you see this video tonight, like in real life, in my time, it's tonight. It is uh, the second one that I've had for fall stuff. Pardon my LaCroix. Um, but yeah, it's going to be all fall stuff. And I'm actually headed to the thrift store here in a little bit just to see if I can find some more stuff to fill this out a little bit, bring some more offerings to the show and whatnot. This is all fall stuff that's going to be offered. So basically all of this is fall. This is some vintage clothing. I probably need to, okay, I need to list. <laughs> 
this is jewelry that I'm going to be bringing to whatnot. I've just kind of been like sorting out different whatnot shows. So all of this is vintage toys minus these Birkenstocks. I bought these Birkenstocks and I was like, yay, I won the lottery because I got Birkenstocks for $6 and they're my size. And then I got home and the entire sole fell off. So I use this stuff called shoe goo to glue it back on, but I was lazy and didn't clamp it and it separated while it was gluing. So now it's glued with a gap like I literally glued a gap into my new Birkenstocks I, th I think I can still fix them and actually clamp them down this time I don't know they're really cute but right now I can't wear them these are all vintage toys that are going on a whatnot. I scheduled a bunch of whatnots because I love whatnot, but a lot of times I don't think about it um, far enough in advance and I'm scheduling like pop-ups at the last minute and I don't wanna do that. I took my tri-fold poster board down because I'm done taking pictures and listing for today. So I'm just gonna take all of the fall stuff and start making a display back here. Whatnot shows really go best if you have a theme and if you have like a nice display and everything, but you absolutely don't have to. There's people making six figures or more over on whatnot with really simple setups or almost no setup but um, for the sake of this show since it's decor I want it to be aesthetic so I'm gonna move everything over here and make it look super pretty oh but actually first before I set the stuff up I'm gonna make a quick run to the thrift store just to see if they have any more fall stuff that I could add to this show okay I actually found an entire box of fall stuff let me get all this impact for you guys real quick okay this is a cool haul uh, this is probably for me though I kind of collect these tribal style mask and I thought this one was really awesome I paid up I paid six bucks for this but that's actually not going in the whatnot i may give this to israel i found a couple fall halloween necklaces these will definitely be in my whatnot i may do like a buy it now um that way people could buy these and then get their discounted shipping i definitely found a lot of brass these are not brass but they were just so cool it says portugal hand painted pastel 787 i'm not really sure they were 50 cents a piece please tell me you would have bought these for 50 cents hand painted portugal i kind of love those so they will come to my whatnot. Uh, this one is Minnie Mouse flying on a broom. She is definitely coming to whatnot tonight. It's a necklace and earring set. I found all of these really, really beautiful brass leaves. They were different prices. That one, for instance, was a dollar, where this one, a um, dollar. But the small ones, like this one was 75 cents, and then this one was 50 cents. So what did I pay? Like $3.25, I think, for everything there. Those are great. I really love those. And then I found a little brass trinket dish also. The way I want to keep this thing. It's not really a fall leaf. I think it's more of a kind of like a palm leaf. Um, it was a dollar. I'm not sure what brand this pumpkin hollow is. It says TTC maybe? Does it say TIC? Made in China? I'm definitely going to run this one through Google Lens. It was only four dollars. It's so cute. There's a little ghost popping out of the chimney. Um, so it's like a little pumpkin patch house and it's made out of a hollowed out pumpkin. It's a pumpkin hollow from a hollow pumpkin. I, I really like that. $4, uh, like I say, I kind of paid up on that. Check this out. Talk about brass leaves. Oh my gosh. I only paid $4 for this. I feel like I could get a little bit for it. So I am going to get the Brasso and kind of clean up any of these little areas here. Um, I don't do everything exquisite when I bring it to whatnot just because the prices that you come in and whatnot are not quite what you get on eBay, but I'm definitely going to be cleaning that up. This was only $4. Um, and I paid a dollar a piece for these brass candlesticks. Brass candlesticks are getting a little bit harder for me to find nowadays. And look at this. You could do an entire collection and do various colored candles, like some pinks and some blues. How pretty would that be? I uh, definitely am into that eclectic style myself. I will bring these tonight and just some nicer, higher end items to kind of dress up the whatnot show for this evening. Here's a little look at what I'm talking about. Like this is a brass display in my own home. Um, I bought these candles from my friend Christopher. I buy Chit um, here on YouTube and he is amazing steals and deals on eBay. That's where I found those blue party light candles. Um, so they're just in this brass large candelabra and then I have like my little brass frog and this was a little boy's toy box that came um, from an auction house the 1960s toys that I bought um, this I actually just bought and am going to be listing maybe I could bring this to the fall show 
it's kind of beautiful. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna put it in the fall show and it may sell and it may not, but it could definitely give fall vibe. Oh my gosh, it blends in with the rug. It's camouflage. This huge quail pheasant thing um, is definitely to be listed on eBay. That is not like staying in my home. But um, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the brass. That's all that this was supposed to be about. Get one bottle of this brass. So I've had this for three years probably and still haven't used it all. Here's the before on this tray. Gonna shake this up and put a little on it. I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, but this is what I always do. I just kind of like take the towel and dab it around like you're frosting a cake. Okay. Just need like a thin layer. I'm going to let it sit because I think Brasso works better when it sits. All right. Surely this thing has sat long enough, right? Let's get to work. Look at that. Look how clean that already is. It literally didn't even sit here for an entire minute. You guys, it's sat here no time. Look at that. Look at the shine in the middle versus this. Cleaned, not cleaned. On some brass items, I really like patina and I don't like the whole thing to shine necessarily that bright, but um, I could do better than what was offered on this one. So I'm gonna keep working on this. Thought I might give you guys a peek at the metrics of my fall show. You can see I had $46 in sales. I was actually on for an hour and 21 minutes, a little bit shorter than a typical show for me. Um, after fees and my giveaway spin, cause I did have one giveaway, average order was only $3 and six cents. My revenue was $31 and 41 cents. That average is out about $23 an hour before cost of goods and obviously there was some time spent here also um in shipping and i had some breakable items here i mean i didn't get rich on this sale okay but what i am doing over on whatnot is trying some new categories i have a show coming up in nostalgic toys and i have done cereal toys and things before and then i have a show coming up in vintage children's clothes so i'm interested to see i clothing never does well for me on whatnot but apparently i'm a glutton for punishment so we'll see how that show goes um i just wanted to give you guys a look at this screen. I think this is really a great analytics screen that Whatnot has put together for their sellers. You can see for every show. Um, so again, only making $31.41 minus cost of goods. Like I say, definitely not getting rich. If you enjoy going live and interacting with your audience, I guess it's okay to make $20, but I wish I had done better uh, during this show. Some shows are better than others. I've had $800 shows over on Whatnot, so I'll keep trying new categories. I did not mean to go sourcing. I, I didn't need to go sourcing, but but, um, so I had a whatnot today. Uh, first of all, yesterday I had a whatnot and I cleared the table off. Like I had 28 orders and every order was multiple pieces. The whole table was full of like little bitty vintage toys. Guys, I sold every single little vintage toy and I just had a few uh, dolls left over like big things and some California raisins. Um, the show went on for two hours and I was just so thrilled because I sold everything. Fast forward to this morning, I had a vintage kids clothes sale. And I mean, I brought cool stuff like 60s, 70s, 80s, smocking, um, frilly lace dresses, all kinds of really cool stuff. 24 people had bookmarked the show and um, I sold one thing and it was to my friend Christopher. I don't even know that he needed it. He is just such a huge supporter. Uh, he's I buy chit um, and over on whatnot, he is I sell chit and he bought a boy's coat. It was my only sale of the day. I proceeded for the next hour to show 25 items without a single bid. My friends were there keeping me company. It's always so cool. Even if you're not buying anything, if you have time to show up to one of your friends um, or someone that you support, whatnot, you don't have to buy anything. Just be in the chat. Because uh, that definitely kept me going because not a single bid came in. Not one bid. And so I want to showcase both sides of the coin. I would be lying to you guys if I said every single show is amazing. I struggle with clothes and fashion on whatnot. You have to have the sizes the people at that moment in the room are looking for um, and then with vintage clothing and with vintage children's clothing like who I honestly thought since I had so many bookmarks like the show would go a little bit better I'll probably try it again I feel like any category on whatnot you should be willing to try more than once I just know when resellers on YouTube or Instagram with a following talk about whatnot everyone's first thing is yeah but you have a following they'll buy anything from you no they won't you still have to have the right product at the right time of day with the right um, group of buyers there in the room like it has to be a perfect storm um, and the product today was good I don't know it could have been a hundred different things I did a Barbie show not long ago that went the same way 
today and tomorrow morning I'm doing another Barbie show. My first one was a Friday night, so this one's gonna be a Wednesday morning and we'll see if things go better. It's always worth a shot. It's worth an hour of your time to go live and see uh, what is that sweet spot, what is that category that sells really, really well for me. Craft on whatnot, craft, vintage craft supplies go so well and ephemera for me always does so well. Dello always knocks it out of the park with Lego, so there are some categories that just always, almost, almost always do well. But vintage children's clothing, that's not one for me. All that to say, after the show, maybe I needed some retail therapy because I went by Debin's. Uh, today is dollar day. I wanted to see what I could find for a dollar. And then after I left there, I went to the thrift store and I spent like $54 at the thrift store. I never spend $54 at the thrift store. So I'm gonna show you guys what I got. Which one do you wanna see first? Thrift store, thrift store, thrift store, or Debin's? This is the cool vintage clothing that I sold today. Well, didn't sell, that I tried to sell today. Uh, it didn't work out so hot. Let's look at the stuff I got for a dollar an item first. So I got seven items all together. What is this? Oh, it was MAC foundation. This is definitely not my color, but I'm pretty sure I can sell this makeup as a category I'd like to get into over on whatnot. So for a dollar for MAC, absolutely picked that up. These are noon. You guys have seen me get these before. I get a static whenever they have even a four pack, but guys, this is like a six pack. So this is $60, $60 worth of sports hydration. They're like these little effervescent tablets and basically it's uh, better than gay. Aid, but it replaces your electrolytes. We use these all the time. This is some type of a controller adapter. So I think that you can take controllers from different game systems, use this, and you can um, then use that controller on your OLED, OLED, whatever it's called, switch. And my son has one of those. So I picked this up for him. This says wood mate set. I think it's for like Yerba mate. Let's open this up and see what's inside. I think it's gonna be like a little wooden cup and a wooden whisk and straw and all that. Let's see for like the green tea. Oh, it's, is that wood? Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Oh, this is the brush that it comes with. It's a clean, what? This is like a little tea spoon, like an infuser spoon, but whoa, oh wait, that is the straw. Oh my gosh, this is so cool, you guys. And a wooden cup. Oh, I really like this. This is definitely though, again, a personal pickup. So glad that I got that for a dollar. Okay, I am 90% sure this is like a hat rack, a coat rack. I started studying it and looking at it at the store. I think these are legs. I think all these poles snap together and then there's a smaller thing of poles. I'm gonna put this sucker together. As Maury Povich would say, I am 90% sure this is a hat rack. What is this? Oh, these two items I actually got for resale. I think that there could be some value here, but did I comp these out when I picked them up for a dollar? Absolutely not. This is like a hole saw blade. What did it say? Carbide Technology TCT hole saw. I just feel like this could be worth something. And then this is some type of a computer component. Let's comp these out. Okay, okay, this one looks to be worth about $20 and it is just a hole saw blade and it comes with a little Allen wrench to take it on and off. I'll ask Drew if he needs it. If not, um, probably give this to Dello to list um, on eBay for himself. And let's see what this thing is. Literally, what is this and how do I find out? Look, at the bottom down here, it says automatic gas ignition systems. I feel like I can research these numbers and maybe find out exactly what this is. <laughs> I don't know, you guys. Okay, I didn't find exactly this one, but I found a lot of things that were basically a circuit board, a control board for um, climate systems. So maybe it's for like a gas furnace. A lot of those were listed around the $50 mark. So if I could get 50 out of this and 20 out of that, $70, I mean, and these, oh wait, this will probably, I don't know, at least 20 bucks I feel like for the foundation. So we're up to $90 there. I didn't put this together for you guys yet. Let's get it together. Okay, I only put two of the little things on there. This um, I actually put on backwards, so like the things would be down. But here's the problem, that is the base. I don't have the hardware. I need to find like a long screw. But look, it's totally a coat rack. It's kind of cool. I, I kind of don't hate it. I think I might put this together and use it in this room. Look, it matches that frame over there. 
I think I'm gonna use this for personal. A dollar for this coat rack? Come on. For everything that I found at the thrift store. Okay, along with that Barbie show I'm having tomorrow, um, they keep having these brand new dolls and I just thought this one, I think her hair is the most amazing thing. She was only $3, brand new doll. So I'm sure I will be able to sell her tomorrow. And then I found this one and oh, I just realized she has one shoe. Anyway, um, she was only a dollar because she's a nude Barbie. If they have clothes, then they're two dollars. But look at the color of her hair. It's the most magnificent thing. I kind of love it. Uh, it kind of makes me want my hair that color. Watch out guys, it might happen. So I got her for the show tomorrow. I got these honest to God for my living room. I'm just gonna put these up, not for any holiday, not for a party. I got two packages of these, they were a dollar a piece. My friend Christy, who is Texas Mom's Closet, um, she's gonna love these. Look at this, it says, please do not open $15 Harry, movie, Harry Potter movie doll series. I don't know how many dolls are in here. I counted five big ones and then there's several like little ones. So even just with the five big ones, that's $3 a piece. Now there's a couple different lines of Harry Potter dolls and one line of them can bring a lot of money. Um, needless to say, I think I'm gonna get more than $3 a piece out of them, so I had to buy them. Here is Hermione, she looks fantastic. Oh wait, I think this is her again. Oh my gosh, how many dolls are gonna be in here for 15 bucks? Is this, no, this isn't Hermione again. Who is this one? Who is this one? Someone comment and let me know. <laughs> is she just like a student? Okay, so that's two dolls so far. Here is Ron Weasley, get over here, Ron. He looks like a pretty young Ron Weasley too. He He's so cute, oh my gosh. Wait, here's Harry Potter in his Quidditch uniform, I think. Is that is that why he would have these boots on? They almost look like riding boots, but I mean, does it have a Quidditch jersey or is that a jersey? Someone help me. Oh, look at this lady. She is so magnificent, wow. The detail in her face and her outfit. Oh my gosh, should I bring these to my What Not Barbie show? Wait, there's not just dolls in here, there's wands in here. <gasps> Are these Universal ones? Guys, the ones at Universal are so daggum expensive. I don't know if these are Universal ones or if these are, um, I don't know, I'm gonna have to see. I know If they are, they're not the remote control ones. They, they might just be the ones that you can get from Walmart in the boxes, but two wands were in there. Wait, there's one more full-size doll. It is this fella here who, who is he guys? Let me know, comment below. He has his wand strapped onto his wrist as well. So, so far we're up to six full-size dolls, two wands. Ooh, look at the little action figures. <laughs> There's one, two. Oh my gosh, I know who this guy is, Voldemort. And he is like a spooky Voldemort. Look, I mean, okay, when is Voldemort not spooky looking, but his feet and everything are crazy. Um, oh, a sorting hat, I think. Oh wait, no, this is one of their hats. Is it hers? I feel like she probably wears that hat. And here's another action figure that goes with this set. One more, oh, she does wear the hat, because here she is as the miniature with the hat on. Get my naked Barbie out of there. And then, oh, here's a little Hogwarts Castle Harry Potter book. Oh wow, with scenes from the movie. It's like movie stills throughout here. That is so cool. So for $15, how do you think I did? If I end up finding any amazing Rockstar pieces, I'll let you guys know in an upcoming video. So be sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss that. Also, I'm literally a few subscribers away from giving away a Louis Vuitton wallet as soon as I hit 20,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So you don't wanna miss that. I mean, I don't know what's more, to know that I sold him for like $8,000 or to win a Louis Vuitton wallet. Either way, you gotta be subscribed to find out. Not counting the book, there's 13 pieces here. So like a dollar a piece for this set. I am not mad about this. I found this Leap Pad Platinum. It was only a dollar. I guess because there's no charger or games or anything and they weren't able to see if it worked. But for a dollar, I'll take a risk on that. And then yes, I bought porcelain dolls. But listen, there is a rhyme and reason to this madness. First, before I show you those, um, here is Heathcliff on vacation, a little book of comics. I used to love the comic section whenever I was a kid. And uh, this is always nostalgic for me. Probably sell those on a whatnot. I am coming back to the dolls. Don't worry, we will come back over there. But I gotta show you guys the rest of the stuff first. 
I've got this huge shield. I'm gonna offer this to my oldest son to like mod. Um, he doesn't do cosplay, but he definitely likes to mod out things like this. I feel like he could maybe paint this and hang it on his wall or something might be cool. Or he might say, mom, I don't want that. But look at this. Okay, really and truly, this is so cool. Oh, it's so day of the dead. I love this sugar skull mask. I don't know what this is made out of, some type of pretty plastic. It does pinch the nose just a little bit, but I think that's because I don't have the strap tied down. It's so pretty. I kind of want to do like one of those Halloween 5Ks where they allow you to dress up in something like this. I saw this helmet laying in the, hey, it's $1 mask Halloween section, and I picked it up, and then I was like, I wish I could find the inside part. Bam! Guys, I got all of this for a dollar. Like this plus this. She ranked the whole thing is $1. And look, it has this voice chest compartment thing. Is this, there's buttons. It really changes your voice. What is the year on this? 2000. Four, we are almost vintage. Oh, this is so cool. Uh, my oldest son has the Hasbro Black Series one, which is amazing. My youngest son may try to steal this. I'm gonna look it up on eBay and see what it's worth because none of them may end up with it. This is really, really a cool pickup for a dollar. Last thing that I got uh, before I tell you guys what I'm doing with those dolls is this candle. It's a candle, but it's, you would have picked it up too. There's no good reason to make a Scottish Terrier candle, but here we are. Good boy. Okay, and now for the dolls. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Three of them were only a dollar a piece, these little ones. I apologize if you don't like dolls, look away now. We're gonna be talking about them for just a little bit. I want to give them Halloween costumes. I want to, not full on horror, they don't all have to be like dripping in blood type thing, but there's no reason that I can't make her a little vampire. Like make her face more of a dusty pale white, to give her some little fangs, maybe even dye her dress black, take off the roses, add some red ribbon, and give her a Halloween costume. She was only a buck. I feel like if I do that with these dolls, then I would be able to sell them. I might even have a whatnot just for them. Like this girl, this girl looks like she's so ready to be, you know, dressed up. This girl maybe could be a pirate. Make some little eye patches for them and things. I got a bunch of them. So there's three, oh, four, that one was only two dollars five six seven eight nine ten there's at least 10 of them, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. So if you're new to the channel, I really like art. I like to take vintage items and repurpose them and flip them, you know, change their value around. A lot of the things in my house is repurposed vintage and that's what I'm gonna do with these dolls. If you're into that, then definitely subscribe, be following along. Check me out on Whatnot because I can imagine I might be selling these girls over on Whatnot. I'll give them a go on Whatnot. If people do not buy them over there, then I will be offering them for sale um, either on my Instagram Instagram. My Instagram is linked below in the description or possibly on eBay. I promise to keep them very reasonable. She, I mean, she looks like she needs a Halloween costume, doesn't she? <laughs> okay, I'm done with the dolls. I'm done with the dolls. <laughs> oh my gosh. So what started out as a really slow day making almost zero sales save for my friend Christopher uh, turned out to be like a pretty cool day of sourcing. I mean, I'm not mad at this. I have no idea why I'm surrounded by so many dolls though. Between the Barbies, the Harry Potter, and the porcelain girls, like it is starting to look a little bit creepy. I have to go get my son and he's terrified of dolls. So I'm going to clean up this mess. And uh, when I get back, I'll start working on actually reset and flipping it. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for watching this video and remember treat your business like your business.